Here, let's draw a B. Yeah. B. C. Have it. Let go. I think my days of allowing people to use my tools are over because uh, they're always junk when you get them back, if you get them back. Sometimes you end up seeing them on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, Ooh, what? I got this little Dremel chain sharpener. There's nothing left of that chain. I swear I don't know if they was trying to cut it a steel post with it or what but that the bars bent everything it's for it to take that long to cut through a old rotten branch that's why i exactly said my days of loaning things out about come to an end one good thing that will beat this seasonal depression right now we're about in full spring bloom up here ain't we baba is everything blooming out you out here you bare feet ain't you Where's your shoes, man? Where you going? I don't know where he's going. <laughs> what you walk out? He's getting a close road. I know he's going for a side by side. That's his favorite toy of all of them. <laughs> The Easter lilies are already up. I Man, we've got purple flowers. We got dandelions. Ugh. All my bushes, the leaves are coming back on them. And hey, you talking about making somebody's heart happy? That's making my heart happy because I don't like wintertime. I don't like nothing about it. I usually, I'm not gonna lie, I hibernate. I shut myself in. I play way too many video games in the winter time. Like, I ain't even got the Christmas decoration down yet. Whew, where do I even begin? About two weeks ago, I had to take the kids to the pediatrician, get Colton's labs done. They all came back good. He ended up having dental surgery. This dental surgery has been planned since November. It's just, you guys know how dentists are. They schedule stuff like three, four months out. Bubba had his dental surgery. He had his two little front teeth removed. They were grinded down very close to the gum. So they took them out and they capped a few teeth. He done great, surgery went great. We came home, you know, on the mend, started to recover and boom, we got hit with a virus. We have been sick for two, uh, a week and a half. He had the surgery like two days, three days later, we came down with cold. So we are finally starting to feel like humans again and feel better. My God, let me just tell you, I, ever since we had that flu A in 2022, it is like we have caught everything coming and going. I'm telling you, it just, it destroyed our immune systems. But I'm still stuffy in my nose. I still got pressure around my eyes. The kids are way better. They um, actually came out of this pretty good. It seems to be lingering on with uh, me and Sean a lot longer than it is them. So I'll take that as long as they're happy and they feel better. Mama, mama will take the brunt of it. Which you know, I always say as moms, and it's not like Sean don't try to help. It's just when the kids are sick, they want mama. Clo Sean got it first. And then Chloe, the next night got it. I was up all night with her and vomiting she was puking a little bit of fever you know so i was up all night with her the night after that it hit colton so i was up all night with him that night so right there i had not slept in 48 hours like zero none and then the following night it hit me <laughs> of course it did so the fevers only lasted for a day everybody was kind of like coming around getting better, starting, you know. Everybody started eating and feeling better and napping, and here I am running on zero sleep for days, totally exhausted, and it hits me. I think I got the worst of it. 
I think me not sleeping for those two nights, two and a half nights, <laughs> like um, really, really made it hit me 10 times harder because I was already exhausted. When I'm up with the kids like that, they're right in my faces, laying down on my chest. And so everybody was breathing their fever breath into my face. And I always get it the worst. I always get it the worst. Y'all, I done the best I could with this house. I did get all of the bedding washed. The, our room, the kids' rooms, all the bedding and sheets and blankets and throws are washed. Vacuumed all those, dusted all those, lice all the bedrooms. That's good. Now, I lice all the kitchen earlier this morning. <laughs> I mean, I took lice all wipes to everything. Now, what I got to do. I've got to pick up some of this stuff out of the living room. Cause I got to shampoo right here, right here, right there. The reason I have to do that is because we all puked and sometimes we didn't make it to the bathroom in time because when it hit you, it's like that. That was it. Let's get this living room cleaned up. I think Sean is gonna, the kids are down at their mamaws playing on their four wheelers so I could get this done. We've done been outside most of the day. I think he's gonna run to Food City, he said, and he's gonna get a whole chicken and we're gonna make some chicken and dumplings. But right now, I need to shampoo some of this garbage. <laughs> remember last year that we done our garden veggies and stuff in the totes right we still have them for you we'll still put a few things in them but these came today these are all grow bags i'm not sure let's see so excited about that that helps helps us expand a lot because we had what five totes last year now we have 24 grow bags that are big that we can plump up with all kind of stuff and i'm excited but let me show you what else we have decided to do and it ain't going to be a huge replay it won't be much on we figured like maybe 150 bucks to replace this but this was already had bad spots in it when we bought this house and this property so it's been needing it you know for a while and putting the pool on it last year goofily and not completely covering it with the tarp you know all the way out water really got under there but you can see the table that was here and it had already it had a lot of damage to it i'm in a real love hate relationship with my yard right now we have all these giant bulky patches of grass that just come up and look hideous you know way before the grass the rest of it really needs cut it drives me crazy i'm so happy although i know i know and got all those yellow babies coming up there I'm getting myself worked up because we definitely probably going to have another frost. Could possibly even have another snow. Who knows? But yeah. Y'all come here. Come here. Come check this. Come check this. Look right here. Ooh, got a chicken in the pot getting ready to make my low and slow old school chicken and dumplings. A couple weeks ago I did this. Uh, here, I'm just going to Put it in here. Ooh, look at them chicky dumplings. Listen, get off my food. I know I done a great job. Did I do such a good job? You got Where's the evidence? All right, y'all have asked for this recipe more than anything. Some people are boggled at how it takes me so long to make my chicken and dumplings. It's because I do it the old school way. I cook my chicken real slow. I take the bone off, like, come here. I'll show you how to do the old schools chicken and dumplings you're gonna need your chicken i'm saying a whole chicken not just a little chicken a whole chicken frozen thawed it doesn't matter the way i do this because you're gonna be boiling this chicken a long time now you're gonna want a big pot to do this thing of chicken bone broth now we're also making our own bone broth when we do this 
but this just adds a good rich flavor to it. Put your whole thing in bone broth and then add you some water in there. Think when you add in your water about your gravy. You don't want it real, real watery, but you can add a little bit of milk, flour, and cornstarch and thicken your gravy up a little bit. The dumplings should help you make your own actual gravy. All right, just covering the chicken. Just some black pepper, some salt. Me, I'm using some Celtic sea salt. Now we can move this to the stove. Now onto the stove top on high and we're gonna let this boil rapid boil for 15 minutes and then we're going to reduce this down to about four and we're going to let it simmer boil for about two hours just put your lid on go back to doing whatever you was doing all right now that the chicken is at and here comes interference all right now that the chicken is what degrees what degrees we're going 160 with? get out of my 160. way booty chicken and start shredding all your chicken off. Oh no, I don't think it's all done. Once you get a bone, you just add it back in your pot. I'm gonna be throwing the meat and all back in this time because I get it completely done. There's a couple little spots. I guess I didn't probe good enough, but it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there the way it is. So that was a little off on my cooking time. Just add it all back in there for a good 30, 40 minutes anyway. It's hot. All right, let's try this again without dropping the fork. Oh. The fork wasn't in there but a second, but man, if it ain't hot. Now we're also gonna strain this too. We're just gonna separate all the chicken. Now we're gonna let this chicken cool so we can shred it. Slowly. Take your broth, add it back to your pot. Bring it to a boil. Now we're gonna take our self-rising flour, add a some to our bowl here. Now I'm gonna take my eggs, and I'm gonna take my buttermilk. And I'm gonna mix these together right at the beginning. And add that right in there. Take you some melted butter. Add to it too. Start getting your mixing going on. Now if you know how to make biscuits, you're going about that same consistency as you would some biscuits. And I, you know what? I can't do it like this. I never could. I'm a get my hands in there and get messy type of guy. So now there's what you want. You want a dough ball. Now onto the kettle. You get it to a rolling bowl like that. You can roll your dumplings out. Me, I just make a little drop dumplings. Do not stir. Whatever you do, do not touch these dumplings. You can take a spatula or a spoon or something and push them down when you start getting full, but do not, under any circumstances, do you stir these dumplings so that intrusive thought you have put it away because it's not it's not going to serve you and now that your dumplings have cooked just pour your chicken in add you some pepper just try to push it around in there try not to stir too much because you'll still break these dumplings up but now right here i ain't even gonna have to add no starch milk might throw a bit of cream in there or something. But there you have it. There's you some chicken and dumplings. Don't show these counters. Uh-huh. This is a disaster. One thing it does do is makes a nice, mess. healthy little mess. But that's about three and a half, four hours of cooking. <laughs> it's a mess, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, gross. We got a treat for y'all today. Okay. Pickled pig's feet. 
Yeah. A couple weeks ago, I done the cabbage and bacon cooking video, and I wanted to see, you know, was it just a thing here or everywhere? And apparently, it was a thing everywhere. So you know what? That triggered something in my brain, and I told you, I said, we got to try something that I know everybody don't eat. Straight up, this is a weird American food. I don't know if people eat it in other parts of the world. Y'all leave us a comment and let us know. But I grew up here in the Appalachian Mountains of Kentucky, me and Sean both, and I have never tried them to this day. Now, my sister, I hate to call her out on video, but she will put some pig's feet down. She has eaten them. I've seen her eat them. She likes it. Listen, here's my thing. My grandpa raised hogs and I helped him. I watched what they walked in every day of their <laughs> life. And I know what it was. And I can still smell it to this day. So I know what these pigs, listen, I know they didn't have this sanitary life and they walked around in doo-doo all day. And it's just, this is why I... Can, can we just talk about for a second, like who woke up one day and was like, that's it. I got it. I'm going to cut some hog's feet off and put it in pickle juice or, or vinegar and pickle. Well, it was just the fact that nothing goes to it waste. It was waste not, want not. Yes. And uh, they believed in eating everything down to the hoof. The toe. But the toes. <laughs> listen, I ain't promising I'm going to eat a lot. Shell would be here. She would be like, that <laughs> jar would be half gone. My sister She'd be will looking put at me like, yeah, we used to do these challenges back in the day where we'd like buy stuff and pull the labels off and we'd pick numbers and everybody would have to try it. And my sister got the pig's feet and she just, is that a toe? That's a toe, grab a chair. Oh. Oh God, Sean, it's hard. It's its toe. Listen, y'all. Oh my God, that is the hoof. Oh, <laughs> why do I do this to myself? Yeah, this was your idea. It was my idea. I'm trying to find oh some sa some head cheese, though. I know somewhere around here we'll have head cheese. Okay. It's, it's, oh, it's not coming out. They're jammed. Oh. You ain't going to get it. Look, y'all, my wife is cut <laughs> off from buying silverware ever again. She's like, I got us the most awesome silverware ever was. Listen. Look at this thing. Look at this, get off Quit making eye. fun of my silverware. Give me that this fork, I'll get this foot out of here with it. Sean, if that flings. You're the one doing it, so don't <laughs> talk about flinging to me. <laughs> it won't come out. Grab a hold of it. I think we're gonna have to like, oh, oh no, I got one. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay, yum. there's mine. Oh, oh my God, I think they took one foot and made it in two, made it, oh, they cut it in half. Why do I gotta do all this? I don't know, you're doing a pretty good job. You tore in, I don't even wanna do this because like I said, they walked around in duty. <sighs> Let me show up close. I can't handle these things because my, my grandpa used to raise hogs. Now, you post to apparently, you're supposed to have some crackers. This got my nose. <laughs> this has got my nose running. <laughs> this has my nose running. But the, the way you're supposed to eat it, it is either some like Lay's chips or some saltine crackers. And that's what we got here. So I, I probably know myself I'm going to need one or two. Powerful. Are you planning on having that much fun with it? Okay. Oh. This thing has spent its life this far up I, it, in. Okay. Sean, don't ruin it. Don't, don't Seriously. It's don't spent ruin its life going. I know. God, don't ruin. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. I bet you it's stained by brown on the bottom. Maybe this. I mean, it ain't nothing but cartilage and gristle and. Oh, God. <coughs> that vinegar is power. That's power. Oh, it is gelatinous. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, that piece was slimy. It's like vinegar jello. <laughs> that piece. <laughs> I don't like it. I How did they do it? That skin. I'm gonna try to find some meat here. Uh, that gooey. Ugh, I can't okay, I think I might have a piece of meat. It just, it, if you can get past the fact that it's a it's a foot, I mean, it tastes like. Anything else pickled. I don't even know how to explain the texture of this, but I mean. Well, what are you supposed to eat? That's what I'm trying the, to figure part, out. This, this is what you're supposed to eat. 
the skin? No, this isn't the skin. Get it, that out of my. No, I don't trust you. You just probably just took no, a toe look, out. No, it to me. it's the meat that's under. It's that gelatin like. Oh, God. Uh, I, it's all bone. <laughs> I, like, dude, I don't get it. I don't eat it. I don't get it. Like, I don't eat pork chops. But, I don't see, it's brown inside. I know that. It's all bone. No. Yes, it no, is. Listen, I know how this thing spent its life. I've slopped the hogs many times in my childhood. And I remember I that smell. I, I remember having that. And I just can't. It, it's they walk around in duty all day. Every Eat your day. piece. I am not. Eat your piece. I took a bite. That's all I said I was going to do. Eat your piece. I'm not doing it. So I'm fair as fair. I. Terry, you want me to pick you something out of this? Dude, I I eat a bite. There you go. I eat a bite. I, I, there you go. I try to bite it. Just that looks like a damn mermaid tail. <laughs> it does. It's actually. Yeah, if you can get past what it is, it's not that bad. The flavor is pretty good. It's just like you're it biting, you're just like protein. gnawing on bones. It has to. Man, I'm a hillbilly, but I ain't got that in me. Like, maybe if I was in a starvation situation, but man, good Lord's blessed me to be able to at least eat a bone. I don't know, y'all. I'm just catching bone. <laughs> okay. So that is one of our weird American foods that we eat over here. Y'all comment below and let us know if you're from. Is that what I think it it's is? It's a worm. No, it ain't. I'm glad I just took a bite, a nibble. Sean, is that a vein? That's a vein. No, that's a worm. That's a vein. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all think it looks like a worm to me. <laughs> it looks like a worm to me. <laughs> If y'all enjoy these type of videos, leave us a like, leave us a comment, let us know if that is a this is a thing where you guys are from, and uh, let us know what weird foods you guys want us to try. It doesn't have to be from here in the United States. And we if can you've order it, we can get this, it in. Like, and it's your like, what's your experience with it? I don't know. Why? Y'all don't mind? Share this video for us. Share it with your friends. We love y'all, and I'm gonna go brush my teeth.